That seems to be the end of Gamebred. Jorge Mavzadal didn't say it straightforward, but pretty much it seems like he retired after a 20-year career, 52 professional fights, has been in the UFC since 2013, fought all over the world in some of the biggest organizations even outside the UFC. He fought in Bellator. People don't even know. He fought in the first Bellator event back in 2009. He fought in Strike Force, he fought in Bulldog, and again, some of the best fighters in the world across two different divisions. Fought the likes of Paul Daly, Gilbert Melendez, Michael Chiesa, Benson Henderson, Donald Cerrone, Damian Maya, Wonderboy, Darren Hill, Ben Askren, Nate Diaz, Usman Twice, Covington, and now Burns. He has the fastest knockout in UFC history, five second knockout against Ben Askren. He was a cause of the inclusion of the BMF title that seemingly he's gonna retire with. Wasn't like an official title or anything like that, but it was a fun thing that he was able to bring into the sport because he was that big of a superstar. Jorge Mavzadal is one of the only fighters in history to not need an undisputed title to become a superstar. Nate Diaz is another name that comes to mind. That is a very special thing as he says he's a multi-millionaire. He never has to work again if he doesn't want to. He has other things going on outside of the sport and for sure that had to have distracted him in the past recent years. I mean, with that many opportunities, with that many things that are actually making you so much more money than probably even fighting is. I mean, we saw the payouts that he paid those boxers for his boxing event, he is definitely doing very well outside of himself fighting. And that's ultimately what we want to see from guys like this, right? Jorge Mazadel paid his dues. He went through the sport from the bottom, started from nothing, and now is one of the most successful fighters in UFC history. It was a long road, like 17 years, and it took him close to 50 fights to do it. But that's sometimes the kind of perseverance that you have to have. And it's kind of ironic because him and Michael Bisping had a bit of a back and forth before, right? They didn't like each other, but both of those two guys show more perseverance than most fighters have ever shown in MMA. They are great inspirations of how to move forward with your career. No matter the amount of losses, like Hori has seven 17 losses, right? Or how you lose a fight. Hori Mazdal constantly lose to the judges on split decisions that he probably should have won that could have deterred many fighters mentally. Many fighters would be like, you know, I'm done with this sport because this keeps happening. I keep losing these decisions that I obviously won. And it didn't happen once or twice. It happened like three, four times in his career against some of the better fighters, right? Happening against Ally Quinta, which still to this day, many people believe that Jorge should have won. If he won that fight against Ally Quinta, he was really close to a title shot. A lot of people thought he should have won against Benson Henderson, who's one of the greatest lightweights of all time. His fight against Lorenz Larkin, even his fight with Damian Maya was really close. His career could have turned out completely differently if he actually got those decision wins. And I will never forget one of the most courageous acceptances of a fight is when he went up against Cesar Ferreira, who was a middleweight almost his whole career. A massive middleweight to go with that. I don't know how we got to the welterweight division. May have something to do with USADA. But before that fight, Hori was a lightweight his entire UFC and strike force career. We didn't see him fight in the welterweight division for five years before he took up that fight against Ferreira in 2015. And he knocked him out in the first round. A guy who dwarfed him, but nobody beats father time. He didn't look the same against Gilbert Burns, if we're going to be honest here. And judging from the performance, it has shown multiple times in his career that he is one of the most susceptible fighters very open to the simple one-two combo. I've never seen someone be so defenseless to that punch. His left hand was absent the whole time from defending himself. Burns showed it, actually rocked him in the fight a couple times. Kamar Usman knocked him out with it. Rodrigo damned, dropped him with it too. Even back when he was fighting for Kimbo, he got dropped with that same punch as well. He was getting rocked by right hooks, left hooks was getting around the guard, and he didn't look as fast or as tenacious as we're used to seeing him. He even looked better against Colby Covington, if we're going to be honest here. Like, just his performance and the way he was throwing strikes, the way he was moving, he looked way better against Colby than he did against Burns. He looked even in better shape against Colby than he did against Burns. Now, did he just age over that year? Possibly. It could also do with the fact that he has other things going on outside of the UFC, and they have been booming ever since he fought Colby Covington. So that's another thing going into it as well. He did get taken down, what, three, four times in the fight, defended, I think, like, one takedown, but at least he was still able to hold intact his ability to get up from the bottom and defend submissions against one of the greatest Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists of all time. He did it twice. He fought the two greatest Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu artists in UFC welterweight history, Damian Maia and Gilbert Burns, and neither of those guys were able to submit him. That's actually a pretty big deal, man. Not a lot of guys can say that, that they fought Burns and Maia and survived on the ground with them. I mean, he spent so much time on the ground against 
against both of them. Burns had a hard time passing the guard. That's something that Hori should be proud of, to be honest. Of course, nobody wants to be proud of a loss, but the fact that he did so well on the ground against someone like that is at least like some kind of moral victory for himself. But I am very glad that he is retiring. I've been a fan of Hori Maslow for a very long time, and I wish him nothing but the best moving forward in whatever he decides. But for sure, stop sucker punching people. So big fan of Jorge, man. I wish him nothing but the best. And thank Jorge for all the amazing fights that us fans were able to watch.